Hmm. Everybody, I'm Madeline Sklar. Welcome to yet another amazing weekly edition of Blab About Twitter. I feel like we need a theme song, Adele. It sounds like <laughs> I, I hear a theme song. All you musicians out one. there, do a theme song and we'll play it. But anyway, I'm so happy to be here to share twi uh, Twips. Ha, huh, that came out wrong. Uh, <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> with my lovely co-host all the way from Australia, Adele DeMeyer. Great to see you, Adele. Hey, everybody. Thanks. Great to see you, Madden. Hello, everybody. It's uh, 9 a.m. Monday morning in Brisbane, Australia, so it's always my favorite time of the day on a Wednesday to start the show hanging out with all of you and talking about my favorite platform, which is Twitter. Twitter rocks. I just have to say that. I know. <laughs> I'm a, tw I'm a Twitteraholic, and I am proud to be one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great platform. Well, and great updates once again. One week later, we've got... I'm so updates. excited. I, and I'm wondering if anybody even realized there's a, a new change that's happened. I mean, you know, here, you know, you put together a nice program for today. And then I kind of slid in a little like, hey, there's a new feature. I knew that it like was launched today while you were sleeping since you're on a different time zone than us. And I'm uh, a hit, but I always miss everything. How funny is that? Oh, because we start really in the US, I'm asleep. <laughs> so I'm oh. in the future, but I'm not in the future. <laughs> but but I like seeing that you're in the future. It's cool. Now, the only thing is about this new update, I don't have it yet. Do you have it, Adele? Yes, I do, actually. Um, oh, the nice man. Okay. button right in my feed. Um, so it's fantastic. Um, did you just want to kick off, Madeline, just tell people what Yeah, so I want to about? talk a little bit. Yeah, I want to mention like what this is, what we're talking about here. And then Adele, you can definitely show it off to us. Um, so what, what Twitter did is they made a change here. I'm going to uh, pull up this link here right off the uh, Twitter blog that I'm going to share with you guys so you can read about it. But we're going to talk about it. So... Um, what they're now allowing us is kind of interesting, Adele, because really it's something we could already do. They, they're making it easier is what it is. So what we can do now is we can privately share a tweet. Um, it's something we could do, but now it's just a one tap, super easy. Oh, thanks for doing that. That looks so cool. I like that new feature. We can drop the link in. Um, so if let's say there, there's a tweet about, you know, you saw us tweeting about the blob today. And let's say you want to send the tweet that I did earlier, you know, hey, come to our blab, that you wanted to send that as a direct message to somebody instead of like just blasting it. You wanted to send a private message okay, to somebody. Okay. You, can, yes. you can, you know, very easily um, take a tweet and send it as a direct message. Now, this has actually been available um, since last year, but it was hidden. You had to tap on the three little dots and tap that, and then it opened up and said, you know, direct message this. But with the new feature today, they're actually making it so that right on your phone, you see a little icon. So it's next to, I believe it's right next to the hearts, right, Adele? Um, yes, yeah, so it's it. Yeah, we'll I'll show you us since I since I don't. Yeah, because like if I just if I yes. just pulled up, you see, there's a blank right right next to the heart there. There's like a yep. blank blank spot there, and I imagine on yours it's going to be right there. It's, it's sitting right there. Yep, that's it. And it's so, like and a it's little. Great. It's a quick way. Little icon, yes, right? Yes, I would have said that they've seen since they've made the DMs longer. Um, I think it's something like 200% growth or something of um, direct messages being sent since last year. So it's huge. So they're obviously, again, listening to the audience and the user. You know, what do they need? What do people want to do? Right. And quite clearly, people want to talk directly, privately more. Um, so it, it's fantastic. I love how Twitter is really, really making a lot of changes to make the user experience better. Um, and it's understandable they want to keep users on the platform and they want to make it easier for us to use, especially because it's so fast moving and um, to customer service. I think that's one big thing yes. um, that's made them do this is for the customer service aspect, for people to be able to communicate with brands quicker. Plus, I think it's going to trigger more people to directly maybe DM the brand instead of publicly tweeting them, I think that's the way they sort of want to try and co um, right. combat, you know, these tweets going viral with people like, oh, you've got bad service or, you know, my car, 
you know, set on fire today because, you know, you, you made it poorly or whatever, and that being picked up and just, you know, spinning out of control. So I think right. they're trying to motivate people to actually direct message the, cust uh, the brands for customer service. Well, you know what's interesting, and I didn't know this until they put the blog post out today that talks about this, that direct messages went up 60% last year. I mean, I think... It's 60 60%. Yeah. Now I'm That's sure you. I'm sure part of it is is when they up the number of character spaces, you know, before 140 characters yeah. direct messaging was very challenging and then they upped it to be unlimited, which I know all of us initially were like, "Oh my god, this is a bad thing." But then we realized, you know what? We thought all the spammers were going to go right. crazy and they didn't really go crazy. Not at least not no. in my experience. Um but allow you on a customer service level to have real conversations with people and not because like for instance um there's a, a company i manage their twitter and it got very difficult to have a private conversation on direct message and it always ended up being hey please call us at or please email us at yeah. and we'll have the conversation move there and the beauty of direct message is that you can have a real conversation and you don't have to worry about doing five or six tweets all in a row of like, you know, trying to get your point across. So I think it's really interesting how Twitter is really paying attention to how we are all using direct messaging. Oh, absolutely. Um, Gary is asking me, what impact does an uh, um, increase in DMs have on Twitter? Does it really keep people on the platform longer? Yes. Um, I think so. I do because for a lot of people, you know, Twitter doesn't make sense or they want to use it, but they don't want to let everybody see what they say or talk about. Or they want to engage with specific people. That's, you know, a specific brand or a friend or a business connection or something. You don't necessarily want to, you know, engage that person publicly or have a conversation publicly. And I think for them making DMs easier, it will keep people on the platform longer because you can have a proper conversation with someone now instead of trying to think how you're going to make this short and it's frustrating. And by the time you figured out how many characters you can put in your DM, you've already forgotten half your message. Right. So I think it does, but I think it's definitely something worth looking into and, and seeing if they've done a case study on that to see if the users are staying and um, how it's improving the user experience. Right. And I think also Twitter is trying to be up against Facebook. You know, Facebook has Messenger and Messenger keeps us on Facebook, you know. And yes, so I feel does. like Twitter is trying to do the same thing. Let's have a messaging platform that keeps our users there that allows them to have rich conversations. And so that's how I viewed it. I, I've definitely have used direct messages way more in the past year. For sure. Me too. Me too. And you can drop GIFs in there now so you can really get the message across, which is fantastic. I love using the DMs, um, especially with all the gifts and everything added. So yes. it's, it's great. I think this is a great update from Twitter. It's funny that you don't have it yet, Madeline, on your, or in your app. I know. And, and the thing is, you know, <laughs> we talked about this last week when we we're talking about apps and the importance of, you know, having your phone set up to automatically update if Auto you don't want to, if you don't want to yeah. miss things. And I have my set. So what I keep doing, you're going to laugh. I keep periodically going over into the app store on my phone to check to see, but all that is shown for today. Let's see, today's the fifth, right? So it's, it's shown a okay. variety of apps but um when i not, when i scroll through i mean there's like a whole there's actually a lot of updates in mine today but none of them have been twitter so it hasn't even made its way to come over to my okay. phone yet so <laughs> i'm really bummed because i want to i want to see it so you want to show us on your phone what it looks like i don't know if, i think my screen is too bright to remember it shows um oh okay it glares a little we can see oh no it's gonna glare again remember my i don't know why yeah. my screen yeah, it is hard. I can see the photo, but I can, but yeah, everything else is really bright around it. Well, what do yeah, you turn it down? down. Yeah. There you go. That's what I was just gonna say. Turn it down. Yeah. Okay. So it's next to the heart. So um, what is that iconic? I mean, it's like a little envelope. Yes, just a little envelope, like yeah. the DM uh, envelope that's on top. It looks exactly the same, like that. 
So it's great. I think this is really going to encourage people to direct message a tweet when they want to, you know, show something to somebody. Um, Because again, as I mentioned before, we've had this capability, but what you had to do, I'll just show an example. So, you know, I'm on an iPhone, you know, I'm in the Twitter app. So I would actually have to tap on the tweet, bring it up. And then you see how you got the three little dots. You have to tap on that. And then at the very top, it says send via direct message. And so when I do that, is it, see, it, what, what we can do now with this new feature is bypass some steps because ultimately it's mm-hmm. going to take you to this screen, but it'll just be a one tap from a tweet. And then you go right here and can send to somebody. And so I see the, the benefit being that we're going to get much more usage of it because it's easy. People are going to be like, wow, I didn't know I could even do this. I, I guarantee you most people didn't even know they could do this at all before. Send a DM? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually get excited when somebody tweets me, uh, I mean, DMs me uh, a tweet. Um, and, I, and actually, I have noticed today I've gotten more than usual. So I guess it's probably because people are seeing this and going, oh, I could... I could send a message and act- actually reference a tweet. So yeah, I think it's brilliant. No, it's, it's great. And the other update, which I'm also excited about, um, I shared it on my Facebook last night, so I quickly caught that before I went to bed, is that Twitter actually won the rights to now live stream the um, NFL games. So, I mean, that is just massive. And, I mean, like we spoke about it about a, a few blabs ago, and we said that Twitter's strong point is is the ability of, of sports and live games and the in the now. And that's why people love using it. And sport is massive on Twitter. And um, now they're going to be able to live stream the NFL Thursday night games. And I cannot wait to see the impact this is going to have on Twitter. What do you think, Madeline? I think it's going to be really interesting because I know that NFL was fighting this for a long time, that they didn't want any kind of streaming. They didn't want any, anything live. Um, I, I think it's exciting. I think for NFL fans, this is a big plus. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's just the start. I think a lot of other brands and companies, um, industries are going to keep an eye on this to sort of see what happens. Like there's one show that's really, really big on Twitter and that's the voice. Um, I mean, here in Australia, it's huge. Our Twitter explodes every time that show goes on because everybody jumps on there and, and they really engage the audience. They're like, share your selfie, share your best tweet, and it actually gets all live on the TV. And, you know, people want to be on the TV. So um, I think this is really opening the gate for Twitter in the future to have more brands, people, and industries take this on. They're going to want to see how this works. And I think it's a massive opportunity. I think exciting times ahead for Twitter. Absolutely exciting. I agree. And I just posted the link. There's an ESPN article about it um, that I just posted. Yeah. Let me just. Oh, yeah, did you, you put to... it in the. Okay, no, I'll, I'll drop no. it in. You want, me, you want me to? You, I can do it. I like this new feature. Oh, it says drop ins won't show in recordings or audio. Hmm. Yep, it's going up. I just dropped it in there. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there's an article for everybody if you want to go read up a bit more about this update. Um, I think they mentioned in, in the article as well, you know, that Twitter has been getting pressure from um, the investors to really, really, you know, bring in the money now. So um, I think this is exciting. I, I can't wait to see the results of this. It's very cool. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to see. Um, so we got a really cool topic today. So Adele, you came up with something cool to talk about. So tell us a little bit about our official topic of the day. Yes. So it's, um, planning your Twitter strategy. Um, I think it's something where we can just touch on a few, few basic points, especially for people out there that want to get on Twitter for their business or as a personal brand. Um, and before you even hop on, you obviously need to plan out your strategy. Why? where, what, why are you going to use Twitter? Um, and I think we'd be grateful just the two of us to share some basic tips, uh, maybe a few tips and tricks here and there, or shortcuts. We all love shortcuts because these things do take a lot of time to plan out um, with, the, with the viewers today. So um, that's why I was like, well, let's start at the beginning and just share some of our knowledge. Sure, sounds good. Yeah, so should I kick off? Sure, sure. sure, sure. You're in charge. Okay. You're so, the boss. 
<laughs> so we all know that Twitter is fantastic for driving website traffic. I think it's the one thing that really stands out for most business users is because of the traffic that you can generate from Twitter. And then on the other part is the engagement and the community that you can build there. If you do it right, you can do it so quickly and easily. It doesn't have to take you long. But it all starts in the planning and the research. Now, I think it's really, really, really important. And I always say this to people. Before you even touch a platform, look at other people using the platform that's succeeding in using it. Look at what they're doing. So, like, how are they using tweets? Do your research. Don't touch the platform unless you understand best practices and what works and what resonates with the audience. And that's my starting point today is I want to say, tell your clients, don't start, don't get excited. <laughs> First do the research. And there's tons of tools out there. I think for Twitter alone, I think the one time I counted over 200 tools that's available to use for Twitter. So this is in terms of analytics, in terms of research, hashtag tracking, hashtag research, so many things you can plug into Twitter um, to see what's happening. You know, conversations, content, what's trending, what's viral, what works. So I would definitely say, please do your research first. Understand the audience and understand the mindset that people have using the platform. I think that's very important. I totally agree with you. You know, listening is so important. you got to like... Pay attention to what's going on, how people are using platforms, because as you you and I both know very well, platforms are different. Like they vary. What works on Twitter may not work on fa Facebook or Snapchat and vice versa. So you have to get a feel for what are the ways that people use it? What is protocol? You know, like on, on Twitter, you know, there's a right time to do a public tweet and there's a wrong time and there's a right time to just move things over direct messaging, but on other platforms, it, it, it can be totally different. So it's always important to really get a good feel for how everybody's using it. Just like you and I know Adele that, you know, we're big with Twitter chats, right? We love Twitter chats. You know, the people that don't understand Twitter chats and don't take the time to learn it are the ones that pop on and start spamming the hashtag during the chat yes, and they think, think that's, that. they think that's going to work and get people's attention. What they don't realize is like, everybody's going to run you out of there because it's not the appropriate way to, to, to do it. So, uh, so I, I think what you're talking about is brilliant, is smart and everybody should really take the time. I think too many times people want to rush through things. They want a shortcut. Mm. And just get started and randomly, you know, start tweeting. And yes, you'll get some traction. Someone will pick up on your hashtag or tweet that you've shared. You maybe get a follower to it. That's fine. I mean, if it's just for fun or it's just for your personal brand and it's not really something you want to use to drive business with, that's fine. You know, share your random gifts, make random updates. It's fine. I mean, a lot of people use platforms for different reasons. Um, but a lot of personal brands also have strategies for their platforms. I know, Madeline, you yourself, you plan out as well your content, your calendar, what you're going to say, what's the message. So do I and many other personal brands out there. Um, but it really is just about your objective. What do you want to use it for? Um, one thing I just want to say is don't just go in and automate everything. <laughs> Yes, use automation. I mean, I'm an advocate for ad automation myself. I think it is the future. It's definitely going there. Automation um, tools and business are just booming at the moment. It's definitely where we're going because we all um, are prejudiced for time and efficiency. But I do see a lot of accounts where you can clearly see everything is just curated and automated through that platform. And people look past that, especially on Twitter. I mean, in that first three, five seconds that you flip up through someone's account, you can immediately see if that's just an automated account trying to, you know, get their traffic going and they really have no interest in you um, or what value they can bring to the table. Um, people are getting clever. They're looking straight through these things. So my advice is please don't set up 2,000 automated tweets a week. Um, I don't think that's how you do social media. That's very bad practice, in my opinion. So if you see clients that do do that, or they think, oh, yeah, I'll just plug in an RSS and just let that feed through, please don't do that, because that's not social media. That's 
I don't know what's the word for that, but it's not social. <laughs> well, you know how like you'll you'll come across somebody that's following you, and so you go look at their profile, and all you see is these these tweets that just go out one after the other after the other. These individual where it's like you know like a robot has written it, you know, thank you, so and so. <laughs> thank you, you can so see it over really. and over and over. And it's like, okay, obviously they have this this set up on some kind of automation, is impersonal. You and I and a lot of our colleagues say the same thing. It's okay to use automation for certain scenarios, but you don't ever use it for connections. You don't use it when you're trying to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. So you can always spot the people that are doing it wrong. They're trying to game the system. They're trying to connect with people in a way that doesn't work. It's not real. So, um, and then they wonder why they're not getting real results, you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, if you just look at the statistics, I mean, engagement rates are really big these days. You know, it, there's no point in having a million impressions, but, you, you know, your engagement rate is 0.5%. That's really low. I mean, what, what does that mean, really, as a business, having all these impressions, but there's nothing happening with your content? Right. So I think a good strategy will definitely involve having the engagement factor um, as, as a top KPI to measure. I think that's a good way to start measuring any of your social media activities um, as a KPI is having your engagement rate up there. You want shares, you want likes, you want comments, you want conversation. Um, <clears throat> and then when you build an audience, it's so important to remember, rather have a hundred engaged followers than having a million unengaged, uninterested followers. Yes, the number looks impressive, but as a business, it, it, it's not going to provide you much value in terms of getting your message out there. Um, so really focus on getting that good quality um, followers for your platform, especially on Twitter, because you want them to share the stuff because they are active and they're interested in your product. And if they share something, chances are their friends and people will pick it up as well because they're obviously sharing it because it's relevant or interesting to them. All good stuff. Very good. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I agree with everything you said, Adele. Really, really yeah, good. No, it's, it's, um, I think it's, it's sometimes overwhelming. I do find it. I work with a lot of small businesses and, 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 and personal brands. People find Twitter extremely overwhelming, and I understand why. Um, but it's just in the research and planning out, just like you would sit down and plan for Facebook. Okay, what do my audience want to see? What do they like? What content is good? What do you pick up, you know, if, if your audience is wor working st stay-at-home moms, find out what do they like. What do they go to Twitter for? You need to understand that because if they go to Facebook, there might be a completely different reason why they're on there than on Twitter. I'm completely different when I go to all my platforms. The stuff I want to see on Facebook is completely different to the stuff I want to see on Twitter. And with Twitter, you just need to understand why your audience is there. Um, is it for news updates? Is it for breaking news? Is it just for updates from your company? Is it certain snippets about an industry that they want to learn more about? And if you can tap into that, that's why I say curated content from other sources are also very important to include in your strategy. Because people might not necessarily just want to hear about you and that little industry, but how other elements fit together. So tap into that content from other sources and that's relevant to your industry, but still yet outside of the industry because you can pick up the followers from that because you will be the go-to person within that little community and what they use Twitter for. Powerful, very powerful. Yeah, very much so. Very well said, Adele. You're on, you're on a you. roll. You're on fire. I missed my coffee on my computer this morning. Maybe I, I should do that I saw that picture. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh dear! Luckily, it's it's okay. One of those detachable keyboards because I'm on a okay. Surface Pro, and it's really flat. The buttons is flat, so I can clean it easily. Yeah, <laughs> so good. It's all good. I saw that picture. I was like, oh no! I was so worried. <laughs> all good. Good. So, uh, 
I, one of the things I wanted to address is that Gary, when you were earlier talking about tools, Gary was asking like to name some of them, especially the free tools, you know, back when you were saying there's like, you know, 200 tools and, you know, first of all, we could have a show devoted to just tools, which, you know, maybe we could do that next week, Uh, but we we can talk about some of the tools for him and and share some, especially the free ones. I know everybody loves the free ones. Yeah, sure. Um, I also saw that I think it was Sean or somebody that asked, you know, if, uh, what do I prefer, you know, to right. schedule? Is it with your buffer? Um, again, really, I think, Madden, I've d- discussed this before. I'll just repeat again is um, you really have to just try both tools and see what works best for you. Um, Hootsuite has got all the ad- added features of monitoring, listening, plugging in third-party uh, app tools all in your stream. So it's really organized and it gives you that extra features. Where with Buffer, um, it's very simple, very basic um, stuff. You've got the analytics as well. You've got some RSS feeds. You've got your teams that you can set up. But it's more basic. Um, it really depends on what you want the tool to do for you. In terms of scheduling, just plain old scheduling, Hootsuite versus Buffer, exactly the same thing. They both got the Chrome extensions. They both got mobile. Uh, Hootsuite's got the auto schedule feature, which is really great because that picks up on algorithm on your account where Buffer does not have that. With Buffer, you have to set up your schedule and times and then add to queue. And then adding to the queue will send it out in those times. Where with Hootsuite, you can send um, either to a schedule or send now, or you can select auto schedule if you are not sure what time to schedule it. And Hootsuite's algorithm will pick up the best time to send out that update for you. So that is the the extra little touch there that Hootsuite got on, on scheduling that buffer does not very well said um you know they're they're they both have their pros and cons i always tell people try them both because you can get a free version of both and see what what you like best um I was a very avid Hootsuite user um, many, many years. And then I remember when Buffer came out, I was like, no, I'm I'm good. I'll stay with Hootsuite. And then I remember after about a year or so, I I, I saw more and more of my colleagues using it. And I thought, okay, I got to see what the fuss is all about. And I really liked it. I'm glad I like spent some time on it, got to know the platform and actually switched over to using it for scheduling. I went to um, Hootsuite for listening. Um, and a lot of a lot of us use Hootsuite to watch our Twitter lists. So I have like all these different Twitter lists and I will watch them on Hootsuite because it's very easy to have one page up and have all the different columns and be able to very quickly and easily look at all the conversations that are going on among your various tw- uh, lists. Um, and the reason why I end up switching over to Buffer is because I like the integrations that they had. And so that's what, what won it over for me because I do a lot of this on my phone, on my iPhone. And I really like the way that they're integrated with Feedly, the way it integrates with uh, Echo Phone, which I use on my iPhone. Um, so. Oh, yeah. That was a big plus for me. So I always tell people, you know, try it out, see what you like. Hootsuite can do everything. So if you're just looking for a one-stop shop for everything, I always recommend Hootsuite. Um, But if you're like me and you've got certain tools you like to use and it's all about the integrations, then, and not to say that Hootsuite doesn't integrate because Hootsuite integrates with everything too. Um, I, a couple of years ago, I I really got into using Echo Phone, um, only on my iPhone for, for certain things. And when I saw that Hootsuite, I mean, that uh, Buffer was integrated with it and, and Hootsuite wasn't, I was like, okay, this really kind of pulled me like into like 100% Buffer for, because I, I still was at a place where I used to kind of use both for scheduling and still kind of like, because like what you were talking about where Hootsuite um, allows you a lot of flexibility with, with scheduling, uh, more so than buffer. Um, so you just have to try and see what works for you. That's my, my long winded answer. (laughs) 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 Um, It's all in the integration. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. I've actually, um, I've just dropped a LinkedIn here on the side, 
with that um, article that Chris McCarroll wrote with 500 social media tools. I've dropped the link in there. I can't seem to drop it in the screen here, Madeline. Could, did you want to try and just see if, if it will allow you? It doesn't want to allow me to drop sure. it in there at the moment. Let me give it a try because it wouldn't let me do the last one, but it let you do it. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. I'll give it a try real quick. No, nope, won't let me do it. Oh, okay. okay. So there's the link up there, people. If you just have a look, it's Baltly Social Media Tools. Chris McCarrick, um wrote a fantastic article and he listed 500 social media tools. Wild. And you can actually sort it. So you go to a section, you scroll down, and you can sort it per platform. So Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Go check it out. Bookmark that link. It's an absolute go-to for any tools that you need for yourself or your clients. Um, you can quickly refer to that list and um, see what's available. So definitely check that out. Great post by Chris McCarra. Um, what, there's something I wanted to say now. Someone asked. Oh, the yeah, e echo phone. phone. I'm, I'm pulling it up I've right now. I haven't heard of that. I haven't either. Can you quickly tell yeah, us what I'm that's about? I'm bringing it up right it? now so I can post a link. And I saw Stephanie had asked that. Okay, so here's the link to Echo Phone. So Echo Phone is, is, is an iPhone app. I'm pretty sure it's just iPhone. I'm not 100% sure if it's anything else. If you look down here at the very bottom here, you'll see it's right there. Echo Phone. Oh, um, Okay. What did that do? And so it is just a typical Twitter app. You know, it just, you know, you open it up, it looks like Twitter. Um, what oh. I like about it is the integration that you can do with, uh, with uh, Buffer. And I'm going to show you an example here of, of how I've used it. So I'm going to pull up a tweet. So like here, here's Sprout, Sprout Social. You know, you and I both love Sprout Social, right? So here's Sprout Social. Yeah. So they have a um, a button in the in the middle right here that says, I cannot do this very well. I, when I sit here and I try to see myself and see what I'm trying to do, I don't, I want well, to give me an <laughs> F. Fail. Okay. So, uh, well, it's because my the way my mic's positioned. Okay. Now I can see myself. So, um, Okay, so to figure out what my tweet is right there where it says retweet. So I'm gonna hit the okay. retweet button and then look what pops up. It gives me come some options at the bottom, retweet uh, via buffer. So I'm gonna hit retweet cool. via buffer and it's already done. It's already done. It has now gone to my buffer. So I'm gonna pull up okay. my buffer and I'm gonna show you that yes. it's already now in my it's buffer already list. my buffer stream down at the bottom there. There it is from that Sprout Social. Awesome. So I like that because it's fast, it's easy, it's quick. It's just a really super cool way of, um, the strategy is, is that on Echo, so I have Twitter lists. I'm all about Twitter lists, right? So on Echo Phone, Echo Phone, I go to my Twitter list. So this is a very specific one for, uh, for Twitter stuff when I want to find articles about Twitter. And um, I pull that up. And uh, when I see something that grabs my attention, I do that, what I just showed you guys. And I just love the way that integrates. And I'm not able, I'm sure there are other tools to do the same thing I just did. But I found that through Echophone a couple of years ago, loved it. So I stuck with it. So that's just one of my many ways of doing my content curation. You know, I love to talk about content curation. I love talking about my tools. I love Feedly, which is... The green one right there, Feedly, awesome. Yeah, and the other one I does. use is called Juice, also green uh, app there. The one on the on the far end there says Juice. Um, those have been Feedly. Like if you want to do content curation, so basically it is having finding great content that you want to tweet out. Set up Feedly. It's free. Feedly, F-E-E-D-L-Y dot com. Feedly, and then Juice is. Um, um, hold on, I'll get that link. It's juice, juice.li. It's from the people that do paper.li. Same group of people. And so this has been hands down one of my favorite. Is juice basically connects with your Twitter, and then every day it will give you 10 articles that are based on the type of information that that you tweet about and that you 
you get on, you know, based on, on all the factors with your Twitter. So with mine, it's all about social media, right? Everybody knows I'm all about social media and especially Twitter. So every day I open up my juice app and there are going to be 10 articles that have to do with social media. And so a lot of what I find in there every day, Adele, is stuff that n not only, you know, shares knowledge and information with me. So I'm just like a little bit more smarter than I was the day before, <laughs> but it's also a lot of good stuff that I want to now share with my Twitter followers, with my Twitter community. So I would yeah. say probably at least half of what I'm reading in the juice app each day I'm sharing and, and scheduling into, into my buffer because it integrates really well with buffer. And uh, just like what I was showing you with Great the phone, what's that? Yeah. If fast, Great way to um, get that's content. What it's all it's about. the same as Nuzzle as well. Nuzzle does the same mm -hmm. sort of thing, gives me updates. I uh, You can set it so I've got my Nuzzle alerts set up to yeah. only let me know once content has been shared at least five to ten times. And then I get the new well, like, okay, this is currently trending or being shared amongst your community. And it's great to see what's happening. Sometimes you miss stuff. So it's a great way to stay no, updated. I, absolutely. Because Nuzzle, I also love another great content curation app. I will find Neat stuff content. through Nuzzle that I don't see anywhere else. Juice will bring me stuff I don't see anywhere else. So like here's, you know, I just opened up my Juice app. And so it's showing me an article. You swipe up. Swiping up will actually open the article. So it's actually showing me, and this is all within the app. And as I scroll through, I see the article. It looks like something that I would want to share. There's a button at the bottom left um, that says share. When I tap on it, it's going to open up on my phone and I can click on buffer. And really in one tap, off you go. It's ready to go. And I can just put it right into my buffer feed, which I'm going to do right now. And um, you just can't get more simpler and easier than that. So if you like to put out lots of great content into your Twitter feed, uh, really good, valuable content, these apps that we're talking about right now will be really valuable to you. Nuzzle is an amazing tool. I came across them last year and I ended up uh, getting in touch with the CEO and I interviewed him for my podcast. Great guy, super smart. Um, well, a lot of people don't realize he's actually the guy that, that, um, put together, you know, like it was like, I think really before Facebook called Friendster. Remember Friendster? Yes. yes. That was like one of the first <laughs> social network sites. He developed that. Yeah. That was his baby. Wow. So good old day. <laughs> I, totally. But Nuzzle is really awesome. So totally encourage you guys to check out these tools. You'll just be blown away at how not only will it give you lots of knowledge, but it actually makes it real easy for you to go and turn around, share this information with your community. So there you Excellent. have it. Great stuff, Madeline. Love it. Um, it's fantastic. I think we've got 15 minutes left. Did you want to maybe speak to Sean, see if he can jump in again? And he can end up the show today with us telling us how we use the I would the love for him to share his story with us. Absolutely. To, uh, Let's give it a try, Sean. And I'm curious, while we're waiting for Sean to get here, I'm curious, you know, who here in the chat room, you know, chat and tell us here, um, you know, have you tried any of these tools that we're talking about? Um, would love to know what your thoughts are on these tools. Are they working for you? Or is this your first time hearing about them? Um, you know, are we just, you know, feeding you with lots of good stuff now that you can go and, and uh, work on? We're going to make this homework. So if you haven't heard of these tools, your homework is to go and check them out and report back to us next week here on Blab because we want to hear from you on that. Um, and Jeff said he heard about Nuzzle from it's us. Homework. Awesome. <laughs> hey, <Teachers. laughs> I, this is how I roll. Rachel knows. Week, Rachel knows. Rachel knows. <laughs> she knows. I'm all about like, hey, you know, this is that moment in the program where the tattoo comes out. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> I don't want to hear any excuses from you guys here. Class is in session right now. You're going to have homework. So yeah, and please it visit that link. I just dropped it again up in there with 537 tools. Plus there's 460 tools that's all related to Twitter. So go check it out, guys. That's a whole week 
lots of research and playing around for you guys to go check out in that blog post. It's really awesome, awesome stuff. Everything you wanted to know about tools and a specific tool to do a specific thing, it's I bet you will find it there. It's great. Absolutely. Let's get Chris on the show one day. He's doing fantastic stuff. You know, he's actually uh, yeah, he's in Houston. developing a tool. He's here. Yes, yeah. he is. He's developing a tool called um, Bulkly. Yes. And it's similar um, sort of, I think he's stepping into API buffer. But he's adding in different ways that you can schedule stuff where it will um, reoccur. For you, so you can take a piece of content so from your blog and you can put it in a list and it, and you can say, okay, retweet it every month or every week and you can, you know, evergreen nice. content, you can keep filtering and using it. So he's still working on the tool. I think it's sort of in work in progress or you can actually start using it. Just go to that site and check it out. You can sign up, I think. Um, don't take my word. I'm, I'm not exactly sure as where he is in the process, but I've checked it out. It's fantastic. I can't wait to, to, to actually just keep using it because it makes you more productive and effective um, and saves a lot of time. Absolutely. So, I'm excited about it too. Time. He's been working on it for quite a while. Yes. Um, really looking yes. forward to it. So yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, Sean, I don't know what happened. You know, he must have, maybe he's rebooting. Oh no, there he is. Um, hmm. I don't know why it's not working. I would love for him to share. Uh, Sean, can you at least post a link to um, your articles that you've written about what you were doing in Austin that we can share here with everybody? Um, just really just so cool well, what you did there and, and just a real testament to if you want to make something happen organically that it can be done. You know, I, Sean's a great example of just uh, going out there and making things happen um, organically without spending money on ads, without having to, to do all that. He's trying to, let's see if he can make it in this time. Sean can do we'll it. We'll try one more time. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll get Gary. Gary said he'll pop in and ask a question if we have no luck with poor Sean. I, well, he's in, but we can't see him. Mm -mm. And I, and we, yeah, we don't, we don't hear you, Sean. I don't know if you can. Maybe he hasn't given camera access. I don't yeah. know. Such a pity. You know, oh, there's always next time. Uh, well, you know what? Let, let, let me move next this. Time. Sean, it, at the very top of your browser, at the top right, you'll see a little camera icon. And you might need to click on that. That That's where the settings are in the browser when you're on, on the Should page. Should we get Gary on in the meantime? Yeah. In the meantime, well, yeah, let's definitely get Gary to ask a question. Absolutely. Gary, you can come hop on and ask your question as well while we keep on trying to get Sean on. Are you putting him in? Yep. Okay, yep. great stuff. I got it. Great stuff. I've been watching Gary's little <laughs> comments throughout the chat. <laughs> always great. Hello, Gary. Funny stuff, Gary. You can always count on me to be a little bit of a smart aleck, um, and that's just who <laughs> it's I am. Fun. It's love, fun. It's love fun. Your and mind. I see that Sean just posted an article, so you guys definitely go read that after the blab. Um, really cool stuff that he's doing. Real impressive. So great. So the question I have, and it would really be helpful for me to, to, to have you guys talk about it. Um, I have a brand new uh, company that I'm working with, which doesn't even have any social media channels yet. They're just, a, I mean, literally like talking about a startup, they're a startup startup. Um, okay. And they're in the healthcare space and specifically in, um, uh, in, uh, um, in a, I don't know how much I can say about exactly what they're doing, but uh, they're going to be developing some treatments. And uh, there's obviously a patient community that's already out there with this particular disease. Um, and so I'm trying to coach them up a little bit about, look, A, we need to be out there because they're already talking about the condition that we're going to help solve anyway. So we've got a built in patient community. So, I, you know, I think this is a probably an applicable question to a lot of people who come in is how do you start from scratch? If you know that you want to find people who care about what you're going to be offering. And of course, we want to adopt the basic premise is that we're, Twitter and LinkedIn and these other social media channels are not just one way. We blab out at you, uh, pun intended, but we hear what you're saying. We connect with you. We amplify good content. What's the best way to go about finding those people uh, in a way that's effective so you're not following like 3,000 people all at the same time when you don't have a lot of content that you're really ready to share, ready to own on your own yet? Do you want to go, Adele? You want me to go? Okay. I, I'll go on that. Um, I think 
the thing is to find is key people in the industry. So if it's health related, I would personally start off by using tools like Social Bro. Social Bro is fantastic and also Tweepy, um, where you can actually filter and uh, people's bios and interests and keywords um, where they come up on. So this is how I start off by growing uh, my clients that start off um, accounts is I actually go search up people in the in industry. So for you, it will be health related, whatever industry it is, whether it's maybe cancer research or HIV or, or whatever it is. Um, you would search up, I would say, key users and active people. So because I like using these tools is I can put in keywords for people's bios or locations. And you can actually filter it by activity or, you know, spam score or followers, how many followers are following, all of that. So what I do is I set it at a healthy um, a score. So, you know, not overactive but like sort of in the middle and definitely have more than 200 followers things like that so i filter out the people nicely and it gives me good quality people in that industry to then start following so that's how i would start by growing the following and finding people to follow is by doing that um i don't know madeline is there a different way that you approach that all right so my approach and i'm actually working on a client right now where we're starting you know starting at zero building up um all the social media and what I'm doing is a music business. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a community of people, a community of songwriters, community of music business people. And so reaching out through Twitter chats. Oh, yep. There's a guitar. Very nice. You could probably just kind of hold your hand up. Like, you you're, like you're like cupping your little, I love it. Holding my little guitar. Kind of like my Owly. There's Owly right behind me. Let's see if I can get my hand just right. There he is. I'm oh, yeah, there he is. Um, it's all about looking for, you know, uncovering your community, you know, the tribe. And so um, so I've been spending a great deal of time of searching for the right people. Instagram, it is so easy to do that. Instagram is all about keywords. You know, yeah. you got to figure yeah. out your keywords. You know what? I actually have a cool app for that. Um, I heard about this. Let me tell you a great resource for everybody. There's an excellent podcast called that, you know, social media examiner. We all know social media examiner, Mike Stelzner. He has a podcast called, um, social media. What does he call it? Social media, the social media marketing podcast. I think that's just the name of it, right? Oh yeah. Social media marketing podcast. Every week they have a guest. Well, what they do at the beginning, Eric Fisher comes on and he shares a new app every week. And I always find great apps through them. And so there's this app that Eric talked about recently called Gramma, G-R-A-M-A. It's the purple one here um, towards the top, G-R-A-M-A, the one with the hashtag. So Gramma, G-R-A-M-A, you go download this. I think it's just iOS. I'm not 100% sure about Android. So you type in, it's ready for you to type in a keyword. So you type in a keyword. So I was typing in like songwriters, musician. I tried different things. I'll do songwriters for this example. So I'm going to type that in. I'm going to hit search. And now it's uncovering a ton of hashtags. Now they're not going to all apply. So I'm going to look at this and go, okay, songwriters, I'm going to tap on it, music, singers. So see, you can tap and now they turn purple when you tap. So I can sit here and tap all the relevant ones that I find. Then at the bottom, so I, I just tapped a bunch. At the bottom, it says copy hashtags. I hit copy hashtags. It just did a check mark. That means it's now on the clipboard of my phone. So now I go into Instagram. Well, a well, couple of things. Let me back up. Actually, what I do instead of jumping over to Instagram is I go and I open a note, a new note on my iPhone, and I go and I paste these in my note. Now I have a collection of really good, powerful keywords. So then when I'm doing a post on in Instagram, I can just go and copy and paste my uh, my keywords that I now saved in my notes. So this has been a strategy that's been working really well for me that we're seeing great results on in Instagram just by uncovering the right keywords because it's so important. You can apply this to Twitter. Twitter, go into advanced search and go try different keywords. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's, you know, I think advanced search is really underused when it comes to um, Twitter. You know, you have, 
in the space that I often operate, especially healthcare, which is heavily regulated, um, and it doesn't tend to be very visual. Um, this one client I'm talking about deals with herpes, not really the most visual thing, right? Or the thing you would share lots of pictures on. Um, there's ways to do it, of course, but um, so Instagram's not really their thing, but Twitter and the advanced search absolutely uh, is a place that you know we're going to help them with, or I am. Yes, absolutely. And um, like I said, again, there's a lot of tools um, like Twitter advanced search works, but you've got to remember external tools make it even better because it's yeah. third party apps that tap into that API. Um, and then the tools will bring up more information for you, much more than um, just advanced search will do. Um, yeah. So I would definitely recommend I've shared that list, Gary, you've got it. get there, go to the Twitter tools list that Chris has pu pulled up. Um, yep. And then go and see the, the, the discovery tools and then just use that. Use hashtags, bios, keywords. It's easy to start finding people. Then yeah, what I was looking for is the tool. What I was looking for is tools to, to manage it, you know, because I'm, you know, just the worldwide headquarters of my company is right here. Um, and what I'm doing is just trying to manage that <laughs> process to keep it a little shorter um, and a little less time consuming um, so I can deliver the actual content uh, for them better. So that's great. Thanks, ladies. I appreciate it very much. I don't mean to take up your you black time, but you're always so good with giving uh, information that's going to help everybody. I thought that was a question that kind of everybody would be general, generic for a lot of people. Yeah. Very good. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks Gary. so much, Gary. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Rock on. Good to see you. Rock on. Um, gosh, we're already getting to the top of the hour. Can you believe it? Like this always goes so fast. Um, and yeah, Sean couldn't get in. I'm really bummed about that. But Sean, thanks for posting the link. And I think a lot of people will, will get something out of reading what you've done. Um, just really such a great story. And yeah, I see uh, you guys are talking about right tag. Thanks for sharing that link, Adele. Um, right tag is really good. I remember uh, finding that a couple of years ago and I was really blown away by just all the information you get on that site. Yeah, oh, it tells you exactly, and it updates live, like how many times the hashtag's currently being used, what's all the relevant ones, and it lays it out all very nicely. Another tool you guys can maybe check out as well if you really want to dig into hashtags, and especially communities. If there's specific communities that you want to find, you have to check out Scroll. That's a fantastic tool. You tap in keywords, hashtags, certain people, and what the tool does is it, 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 it pulls through all the data, massive amounts of data, and it processes it for you. And it actually forms the communities for you um, in little nodes. And you can drag and drop people, and it's really cool stuff. Um, and it then shows you what's the community, who, who they're all tapped into, which hashtags they use, how it all fits together. And it actually puts communities out like a fantastic tool. Go and check it out. I don't want to make it sound too complicated. I'll quickly grab the link and share it with you guys. And while you're doing that, I went ahead and posted um, so the link for next week's community discovery. Yes. Fantastic. And here's the link for people that want to check that out. Excellent. Here we go. I've been hearing a lot about Scrawl. I'm hearing more and more about it. Really cool tool. Go check it out. Um, it's... Um, can be complicated, but I would say just use the basic search functionalities. Um, start with your keywords. Uh, read the how-to document just to understand how to use the tool because it's quite advanced. It's really advanced. I mean, I'm busy using it myself with some research and case studies I'm doing. It's mind-blowing. Um, but use the basic features and boom, it pulls up everything. Influences, your commun community influences, bot accounts, um, discovery, um, oh, it's an endless list of things it, it's got available. So go check out Scroll. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing all of that. I posted a link for next week's uh, Blab. So I encourage you guys to go and subscribe to that because, you know, we do this every week. We do this for you guys. Um, and, uh, and I know the hour does go fast. You're so right, Gary. It just uh, zooms right by. Um, I think we should have an episode devoted just to tools and, and talk about, you know, I mean, we've done it before. There's, there's never a shortage of tools to talk about because there's so many great ones out there. 
and I still also, we need to do a tech lab one day and just talk about all the techy stuff that you and I use, Madeline. I know a lot of people's ask time and time yeah. again. Please tell us about these little apps and tools and kit and stuff you use. So um, we'll do one of those as well. You know, I know April's going to be a bit of a tough one. I've got my family coming over for three weeks, guys. I'm so excited. Finally, some family. Um, so there might be a lab show or two I might have to miss because um, I'll be spending it with them. Madeline, I know there's one show we are canceling. We can maybe just tell the people because that's the day you actually add uh, social media. Right, right. Not that yeah, I know. I hate that we're, that we're doing this. But, yeah, in two weeks, um, on the um, 19th. 18th or 19th? Yeah, April 19th. Yep. I, when when we're normally here doing this, I'll be speaking at Social Media Marketing World Ooh, in San Diego. So exciting. Doing my presentation on Twitter <laughs> so cards. Exciting. I'm so excited. Yeah. How, how Twitter cards can help you massively grow your audience. I'm so excited. Um, I know Jeff's going to be there. Right, Jeff? You're going to be on the front row? I, I Actually, you know what? For anybody that's going to be there, I know Karen's going to be there, Jeff. You, you both are here right now with us. Um, I want somebody to periscope my presentation because my mom wants to watch and she, she'll she be here in Houston. And so it would be awesome if I can have her uh, tune in while I'm doing my presentation. So we'll talk. Maybe somebody can periscope. But you know, Adele, um, I do have a surprise as to somebody that is going to co-host with me on one of the dates that you're not able to. Do you want to know who that's going to be? Oh. Ooh, Diana Adams. Can you tell us or not? Diana Ooh. Adams, post planner. Oh my gosh, from post planner, fantastic! She's going to be an awesome yeah. guest. Oh my gosh, the energy from that girl is so. She's beautiful. amazing. Well, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm trying to get her to come on our show just to come hang out and chat about stuff with us. Um, and uh, I mentioned about how uh, I'm going to need a co-host uh, later this month, and so she said, "I'll do it." Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, I was on the post planner bl uh, blab last week. It almost felt like this week. No, it was last week. I was on there talking about how to craft the perfect social media post. I've just um, updated under media on my website. Under media, um, I've posted the blab and a little oh, bit nice. of snippet in there, what we spoke about. So that was fantastic. Um, I think you were next on the list as well to be a guest I with I them think, sometime. I probably after yeah, social media I think we're going to schedule something after after the conference because that's kind of like the big thing on the horizon right now. So, uh, but that's so exciting! So excited for you! Fantastic, Rachel. We both have a lot of big awesome. things going on right now. I was just um, in an article that came out today. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, I'm starting to get asked to write you know, for more and more, um, blogs on social media, you know, those ones where they want, want to collectively have everybody share like their top tips for something. Um, <laughs> actually the, I'm going to, I'm doing one for social media examiner that I've got to go work on. Um, here it is. It's, uh, 27 digital influencers give their tips, top tips on successful blogging. So, Cool. Let me post this link. It's from EmergeContent.com. They uh, reached out to me recently and said that they were, I didn't realize it was, you know, this many people, but uh, they said they were putting together a blog post um, for bloggers. And so if anybody would like to read it, there it is. Um, check that out. And you all have homework. So you all know what you need to work on. <laughs> and uh, lots and lots. And Adele, we're all going to go to your website, to your media page, and go check out the blab. Um, and if anybody's going to try out Scroll, please let me know your feedback. I would love to know what you think about the tool. I think it's really, really great. It's a little overwhelming, I think, to understand the full functionality. But please give me some feedback. I love getting feedback from people, you know, how they think they can use the tool. Is it useful? Is it not? Is it too complicated? So please send me a tweet. Um, and let me know some feedback. I would love to hear from awesome. you. Awesome. And real quick before we go, Gary wants <laughs> us to review the assignment again. So to recap, we dished out a lot of different tools earlier uh, on our phones. And the assignment is for you to go check out the tools. If, if these were ones, let's like focus on the content curation ones because we were focusing on those. If we mentioned tools that you're not familiar with, we talked about Nuzzle, Feedly, um, Echo phone only because Echo phone 
um, can help you do content curation with Buffer. That was one of the things I was showing. If you're not familiar with any of these, your assignment is to go check them out and then report back to us next week on Blab so we can hear what your thoughts are because we are firm believers in doing, right, Adele? We're doers. Yes. So, Absolutely. you know, we can sit here and share our knowledge all day long. We do that a lot because that's how Adele and I are. We like to share. We like to help. We give away a lot for free because we're just, we're just like that. Um, but unless you go and act on it, what good did this hour do you? So you really need to go take action. So that's why I'm always saying, here's some homework for you to do. So anytime we're sharing these things that you're not familiar with, take the time, even if it's just five or 10 minutes, go check out the website, go learn a little bit about it. You may find that this is something that can really help you better. Okay. So we want to hear from you. Anybody some useful links for downloadable strategy examples, um, how to lay out a social media strategy, stuff like that. I've got great research. Uh, excuse me. Hashtag one take snaps. Uh, I was just thinking <laughs> that. one take blab. I was thinking, exactly. I was thinking one take snap and we're blabbing. We, now, you know what? You just created a new hashtag. One take blab. Uh, so if you, if you need some resources on strategy, Example, see, I've talked too much now. Strategy examples, send me a tweet and I'll get that off to you. Awesome. You guys have been great as always, right. Adele. It's always a pleasure having you as my Thank lovely co host. Thank you. Always a great Thanks, time. Madeline. Great hanging out with yeah. you. Thanks to everybody who joined us today. Great to see your faces, having a conversation. It's exciting every week to see you all. And um, yeah, take care and see you around on Twitter. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.